what is the purpose of suffering? Is there actually a purpose? And if there is, uh, what does that actually mean for you and I? Uh, well, let's get a quick definition. What actually is suffering in the first place? Perhaps we could say suffering is this. It is the longing for something I do not have or I cannot have. Think about losing uh, the loss or having the loss of a loved one to cancer, for example. What's the suffering there? Well, it's uh, the desire that this loved one would be present and in your life. But they're not present. They're out of your life. They're deceased. And so we could say that there is a separation from your desire for their presence and their absence or its fulfillment. Uh, think about the example of someone struggling with um, anxiety. Uh, what's the suffering there? Well, there's a desire for peace of mind or peace, peace of soul, uh, but you don't have that peace. You don't have that fulfillment. So there's a gap, we could say, between your desire for fulfillment and its lack. Uh, finally, uh, think about someone suffering from the loss of an arm or a leg or the loss of a limb. Uh, what's the suffering there? Well, clearly there might be a little pain involved, but even more so, there's the suffering that has come from your desire for the presence of your limb and your full faculties and their absence. So there's a gap or a distance between your desire and the fulfillment of your desire. Where does this gap or this original separation stem from? Ultimately, it stems from the original sin, or as I like to say sometimes, the original separation, where our first parents, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, willingly or chose willingly to separate themselves from natural fulfillment in God, in the will of God. Because of that original sin or that original separation, uh, it not only affected Adam and Eve personally, but also everyone that has ever been conceived and brought into the world, you and I, and all of history. Sometimes it doesn't seem very fair, but this is just how life, it seems to work. Uh, because of that original fall of Adam and Eve, it has affected and infected, in a certain sense, our human nature with that original fall. And that's called original sin or original separation. So what does Christianity have to say to this? This is, I think, what really brings out the beauty and the power and the comprehensive fullness that Christian Catholicism gives to the answer of what is the purpose of suffering? Because ultimately, God in the person of Jesus Christ does not eradicate suffering, like waving a magic wand over it, but rather enters into the suffering. Let's be clear, suffering in itself is not good. It's actually a curse. It's an evil. But the great power and the beauty of Christianity is that, you know, in the words of St. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, chapter 3, verse 13, uh, Jesus Christ became the curse for us. Though he was sinless, he became a curse unto himself. That was through his incarnation, his passion, and most especially, his death on the cross. This is helping us get at, ultimately, the answer to the question of what is the purpose of suffering. The purpose of suffering is to follow after the pattern of God who enters into suffering through his life-giving love on the cross. This is really the pattern for you and I, um, to follow after this bridging together of the gap uh, that Jesus Christ offers us through the cross. Even though it's su suffering is in, is in itself a curse and an evil, God can actually bring about great beauty and goodness through suffering. And this is when we willingly choose to enter through it as the way of the cross. So, a couple things here. Uh, I don't want to oversimplify things, but perhaps we could say that there's at least one thing we want to reject when it comes to suffering, and at least one thing that we want to accept or embrace. So what is it that we want to reject? Well, first of all, um, if I'm being honest, and I'm trying to be, uh, a lot of my sufferings, not all, but a lot of my sufferings stem from my own sinful choices. So uh, I don't personally struggle with drugs, I struggle with other things, but if I were to personally struggle with drugs, it's a sin. It's a sinful choice, illegal drugs. Uh, but uh, perhaps someone who's struggling with drugs would start to eff uh, experience the effects, the negative effects of those drugs. Uh, addictive behaviors, perhaps even some psychological instabilities, uh, and a host of other difficulties. So we can see that the wages of sin uh, is death, ultimately. But we can see that a lot of sufferings actually stem for our own, from our own sinful choices. So what is something we absolutely want to reject? Sin. And not only sin, but when we reject sin, we are actually welcoming goodness and the lack of suffering. We actually live in the beauty of peace. What is the one thing we actually want to accept? Well, when I was growing up, I grew up on a nursery farm, and 
Sometimes he'd be helping out my dad in the heat of the day, and I'd start to whine and complain and maybe even swear a little bit under my breath. And my father would say, son, you can either choose to embrace the cross or you can drag the cross. So a lot of life can just hand us sufferings that we didn't ask for. It's not a, on a, as a result of sin, and we can't control it. But we can control how we desire to accept or drag it. And so this is really where Jesus shows us the pattern of how to uh, live with suffering, and it can actually be a beautiful purpose. That we can become great saints by actually not just dragging it and whining and complaining, but choosing to embrace it and say, God can bring about great beauty and goodness through me when I choose to accept it. God bless you.